All right, we're back with Arnaud St. Paul, who is the co-founder of Heal Through Words. And a little teaser of what will come up in the conversation is he's the one that told me and showed me how um, sounds can actually put out fire. But we'll get to that in a minute. That'll be the teaser for, uh, for a little bit. But first of all, Arnaud, tell us, you got a diverse background. As, I, as I, we talked about, you've been an entrepreneur and investment manager. You've been in wellness and wealth management and eyeglasses and logistics and a lot more. Share with us how this has evolved and how you've evolved to where you are now from that and to where, and to where you are now. Yes, the, thank you. The, I think, you know, uh, I've been always with two different paths at the same time. On one side, uh, in that quest with myself of understanding myself and discovering who I am and growing into the person that I am today. And on the other side, the business side of things, where the tech entrepreneur doing, you know, investment management successfully and innovating uh, in technology. Uh, and it's only now that I'm really putting everything together and, 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 and created that concept of conscious technology that really allows me to offer to as many people as uh, who are interested in it uh, a method and a path and a technology that helps them to really fulfill their potential. Uh, this is what I've been prepared for, and uh, the you know once you when you're a kid you're dreaming of what you could do and could be could become, uh, and and it really responds to a an inner calling uh, of mine uh, to provide these tools to the world. Uh, so and I'm very lucky to have my wife sharing the same purpose. So uh, that's why we created Heal Through Words. Yeah, and I'm excited about it, as you know, um, after we met for the, for the first time a while back, I, I got excited about it to the, to the point where you're talking about making a difference, and I always wish I would have trademarked that let's make a difference uh, thing when I started it years and years and years ago, not having a clue that it was going to be used all the time. But um, see, so you're, you really are a leader in creating new ways for entrepreneurs to succeed with, with conscious capitalism, as you call it. Can you describe what that means? Uh, yes, I mean... You know, obviously, this applies to any individual. It's not just entrepreneurs uh, and uh, even an executive or or a person in general. Mm -hmm. uh, what so <clears throat> what we offer here is uh, a conscious technology, right? It's and and if you're an entrepreneur, you can apply that to conscious capitalism as well. Meaning, providing. Uh, in your company, through your company, you actually have a higher purpose than just making money. You're right. delivering a, a something to the world, right? Uh, conscious technology is really offering a clear method and path for people to onboard themselves into the discovery of the treasure that, have, that they have inside themselves and they were not ready to tap into it so far because of belief systems, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, we, can, we can spend a, a lot of hours on that topic. Uh, so it's uh, what we have been focused on is through Heal Through Words, is using the power of words, which defines all our communication, or at least most of it, um, to be able to reconfigure the, the patterns, the thought patterns that we have so that we can modify our relationship with what we call reality and bring in the most positive aspects of them. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, it's a perfect segue to, 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 to talk to what I was going to say and, and why I'm very interested. Um, you know, we deal with a lot of our clients and educate a lot of our clients about how important wellness is, quote unquote, within their organization. Um, it's a critical topic, actually, and um, so many people are looking to be fulfilled, to use that word, and, and, and get that in whatever is inside of them, as you said, come out. Um, the obvious is it's clear now that, that management is really looking at this as a critical area. Um, the wellness and health of, of management, the wellness and health of their employees impacts the health of the business as well, and vice versa. Can you explain how a culture of positivity and happiness in a company 
can definitely lead to more productivity and and just as you said fulfillment inside of each individual yeah i mean we we all know that the basic brick of a company is each individual right i mean without that there's no company um and even if the big companies these individuals can, are so standardized that they could be replaced one with the other still uh, the value of the person is so important to the company that that's what can is going to make a big difference uh, in the bottom line. Uh, so we really want as managers or as leaders or as CEOs to have the best of the breed or, at, or ha have the best version of any individual we have, right? The optimized version. Right. Uh, the ones that feel fulfilled in their work, but also in their lives. If you have someone that is always sad, and I'm going to take an extreme, of course, uh, depressed and so forth, we all know that the productivity will not be good at all. Uh, if you have someone that is passionate about her job and she's having a happy life as well on her private side of things and etc., you will get 200% or 300% productivity. Um, so it's very common sense. Now, what's the difference between one and the other? Uh, the difference is coming mostly from what we call uh, limiting belief systems, where the person does not believe she can do X, Y, Z uh, for any reason, and it's, it, trans, it, uh, it manifests into what we call self-negative talk, meaning I don't know if you know that, but uh, as an average, we have about 70,000 thoughts per day. Um, I, I think it's actually 66,000, but whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still an average. And I, a study in University of Texas showed that on average, 70% of these thoughts are negative in essence. Again, it's an average. The exception is the passion wow. okay. one and they are very positive and so forth. So envisioning, if a person envisions a positive outcome, the probability for it to, to happen is more likely than in the country, of course. And, and that's the kind of thing uh, we want to work with, where we have this method that helps people to really shift from that 70% negative to, you know, a lower uh, ratio so that the person can liberate herself open up new potential and therefore serve better uh, the entity with which uh, she is she or he is working you know you said something that, that we talk about all the time maybe different ways um, um, there's no such thing as a company it, it's actually people you can't touch the company and you know people join people and people hire people you don't we might say I joined a company but you don't really mean that it's just it's you know um, and you know, one of the things we talk about in our business is about people. We say it all the time, but in effect, every business is about people. Um, yes. And we always talk about the acquisition of talent, but then the next steps are the development of talent and as a result, the retention of talent within your company, which then helps you with the acquisition of talent. And as a result, again, it's a lot more detailed, as you said, you, can get, you get a winning culture that, that is good for everybody. And that attracts more and more talents. Absolutely. So what you're, and, and I don't mean to simplify it, but really where, where we connect, I think, fantastically is in, in the, that talent development part, you really make an impact in that part for, for the employees of businesses. Yes. And, and, and as, you, as you tip the balance towards more positive insights and, and, and thought patterns, uh, that person will attract more other positive outcomes on one side, positive other pe people that are in the same range of vibration. And therefore, you, you create a virtual circle within your company that allows you to not only get more productivity, but can help you to grow faster and bigger. Uh, and, and that's really key. It, usually we don't see it because, you know, it's quite an intangible. Uh, but it has a very big impact on, on companies in general, on any entity, whether it's you know uh, an NGO or 
any community, let's put it that way. Well, I, no, you're 100% you're right. I used to lead an international nonprofit, and it was there as well. Obviously, you have a winning culture or not, and good people from whatever country, it didn't matter, were attracted to other positive people. Um, didn't matter what language you spoke, actually. Didn't matter what you look like. Positive was attracted to positive, not to oversimplify it. Um, I did find one thing interesting with, I interviewed an executive of a professional hockey team once, and he said, you know, every year we aim to win the championship. Even though we know we're not going to win it every year, it's very hard. We aim to win the championship, but what's required is we have a winning culture from the usher to the secretary to the player to management within the organization because we want to have a winning season every year. Mm. How would you relate to that? Well, uh, the... The competition thing is um, a, a very dichotomic or, or segregating way of perceiving things. Um, in the, in the, 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 the methodology we offer, it's more everything, everybody wins. It's not, it's not someone wins and another loses. Well, this was just interrupt. This was him talking about the winning culture in his organization that was um it was everybody everybody was involved it wasn't just the player it was literally the usher in the stadium it was the secretary that's more okay. Of what okay. it it was the wellness of not just the direct players if you will but everybody makes an impact yes yes and and that's definitely the way to go right uh, to offer such an environment where people are only enticed to find the best in within themselves. So we're, we're going back to the, you know, the usual methods or the, the, the theories mm -hmm. of uh, good leadership. It's nothing really new. We just go deeper into the individual uh, psyche or, or way the person is actually working in Italy to offer a way out of these uh, uh, negative patterns. Right, which there's plenty around, and sometimes you have to fight for it. Yes. <laughs> it's true. Uh, hey, for up-and-coming leaders, younger people, um, tell us how the relationships you developed over the years, the experiences you've had, tell, tell them how, how their personal and career growth can really be impacted by, by recognizing this early in their life. Recognizing what, sorry? Recognizing how important relationships are to their personal and career both. For example, you said, you know, you get attracted to the, if you will, the positive people, etc. cetera. Um, you know, tell them why that's so important and how it impacts your, your everything. Well, the, the thing is, you know, for any, any individual really, what do we want to choose? I mean, we have two types of experiences and obviously it's a, it's a summary, but whether we want to have a, you know, a happy meeting with my boss or a, a, a very sad one uh, where he fires me. That's the other extreme. But uh, what I'm meaning by that is what, what is, if we are looking at our career or how do we want to fulfill our lives more than the career itself? Right. Career is just a subset of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, we, most of us have a passion and we, have to honor ourselves to go through that passion and, and point to it in some way or form um, in order for us to experience it because that's where we are actually fulfilling ourselves to the most to the, big, the best of our ability and really create or connect with any activity that allows us to really fulfill that, that passion. Um, when you are in that direction, you don't want really to impede yourself with, you know, uh, negative self-talk or stuff like that, that will allow you to, that will bring you to a tangent of your highest potential. Uh, you want to be at the top of your game uh, so that the brilliance that you're looking at when you have the vision of who you want to be um, is fulfill it, will, will fulfill itself uh, in a few years, in a few months, whatever. That is right. It doesn't sure. matter. So no, I think... it's 
It's not that it's important, it's absolutely mandatory. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And it, it, it impacts so, it impacts so much. A um, couple of personal questions just to get to, so everybody can get to know you. Um, I think I know the first one, the answer. Do you have any pets? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> not right now. Not yet. We would not love yet. to have. Do you have a favorite activity or sport? I do not have any sport. Sorry for that. How about activities? Do you have something you like doing? Uh, oh, hiking in the mountains. <clears throat> well, it's a beautiful place to do it around Sedona. Um, yes, indeed. Do you have a favorite movie or TV show or anything like that? Uh, movie? Oh, yes. One that not a lot of people know. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's called The Hash Ashes and Snow by Gregory Colbert, I think. All right. I'll have to check it's that out. It's an absolutely amazing movie. It's very slow, so it's not for everyone, <laughs> but it's very, very beautiful. All right. How about a favorite book? A favorite book? Huh. That, again, is going to be a very special one. Uh, it's called I Am by Ramana Maharishi. Hmm, cool. Um, and do you have favorite music or food? And food? Music? Uh, lounge? Lounge music? Mm -hmm. And as for food, my wife's. Oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Great job. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for inviting me.